Doctor Who fans are not complaining. The Doctor Who, our Hamburg podcast. Doctor Who fans are liaming. Real Doctor Who fans. They're liaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With real Doctor Who opinions. Says the person who's going to have a massive rant later, I might add. Hello and welcome to the Doctor Who Lambert podcast, episode number 301. Yes, a celebratory somewhat of an episode where, well, we're going to be going over... At least a celebratory thing, sort of, but at least our podcast won't end with disappointment. I am Brett. Joining me from the other side of the pond is the dynamic duo of... Liam. Hello. Legion, hello. All right. So, um, 301, we did not make that big of a deal of 300 because, you know what, when you've celebrated 200... You know what? You're looking for a bigger milestone. So, uh, you know, next celebration, um, you know, we'll, 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 we'll do an event. How about we do an event? We'll have crappy, like, you know, podcasting art where Legion's head will not be like actually attached to his body and Liam's head will be like <laughs> gigantic. And then we'll do a teaser that sounds horrible. And then we'll start yelling at people on Twitter and on Facebook fan pages for not liking it. How about we do that? Don't forget the green screen. <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Brett. There's your, uh, there's your animation project. To, to, ah, to, to I know. It's going to take me 200 episodes to do that sucker, man. I'm not that talented. <laughs> 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 All right. Well... In this episode, we are going to be breaking down some of the big finish news regarding basically the last days of the Seventh Doctor, the new series stuff, where I will say that I do have a rant with rationalization for it. It could go unhinged, but you know what? You never know until you're in the middle of a rant and tell where you're going to be going. I do have feelings, though, and I am actually open to listening and agreeing and or disagreeing. Because that's the type of person I am. Good to know. <laughs> and then we're going to do kind of a short um, October review where the only review that we're going to be having, I believe, is the Pastinus Gang Trespassers 1 Rogues Gallery because we are pushing the third Doctor Intelligence for War to review in November. And then we are going to do a complete breakdown of the once in future celebratory 60th event question mark. Um, mm. sure. Mm. Um, yeah. Celebratory is one word for it. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I mean, uh, okay, I'm not. Event getting, I'm is not, also another word for I'm it. I'm not getting into it right now. We are going to go into this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Get into that. I just almost want to... Rile him. Rile him. I know. I know. Okay. I, I will say what I was going to say. I'm so grateful I did not buy the DVDs. Oh, okay. Got that off my oh, chest. Oh, my God. How much of a dumpster fire has this been? Mm -hmm. Liam bought <laughs> the physical one. and I bet you're regretting this now, aren't you, Liam? Well, it is what it is, I guess. How many issues of it have you got through? Issues, yeah. How how many CDs? I think three. <laughs> how many Not CDs many. with sleeves that are in good quality? I haven't opened them, so I don't know. Well, y you could be able to feel where the you know the logo art is and see if it's all like crunchy and flaky and stuff like that. So I mean, it's I mean. Uh. A lot of the pictures that I saw on the audio group that were posting it, I mean, not the Facebook fan page group because, you know, smiley, laughy face emoji, but um, the... Um, laughy face emoji of doom. <laughs> you know, do you know uh, I, there was a post that was non-Doctor Who related that I almost did the lassie, laughy face emoji that Le Legion did, and I'm like, oh... This could come across rude. I better not. Because I just <laughs> I just wanted to do it. Uh, ever since being kicked out of the fan page group just for doing that, that is that is my now, I, I, that's how that's I respond. That's your number to, one thing. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
but the audio group, like they constantly are posting pictures of the uh the cell, you know, the 60th anniversary once in future cases still in the cellophane packages with just the crusted off, you know, lettering of the Doctor Who logo. So I mean, I would feel around to see oh, if you damn. can detect if it's all crunchy and stuff like that because, yeah. Yeah. Mm, I'll give it a go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's been an absolute dumpster fire. It has, isn't it? Uh, I mean, you know, it, at least the bright side is, it, you know, there was good intentions for, you know, what they were doing. There was. But- there was good intentions, but I think this is a lesson from the older days of Big Finish. Make sure when you're ordering physical media, they've done this for over 25 years now. Make mm. sure the company that you're using isn't one that you have only just started using and has a reputable output. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so is there an unreputable output with this company that is they're using these things for? Well, I'd assume so, because the reason why no releases after 4, 5, 6, and 7 have been done yet is because they did get them, but they were all faulty. Oh. Hmm. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I bet that company is, uh, I bet that company is regretting it now. Well, and here's I bet the big finish is regretting it. Uh huh. Well, and here's yeah, the other part is is now they're you know you can almost probably hear them like oh now we need to be a little bit more like fussy regarding physical media we need to like scale back even more it's just like no don't scale back mm. just put out a quality product just end of mm-hmm. story and here here's yeah. another thing I I just barely just popped in my mind again and this goes with you know the whole limited series of the once and future box sets don't you think that it is an absolute shame that you know because of the numbering because they wanted to make this special and only have 3000 in existence don't you think that this is also taking away from you know the foot traffic of the you know uh, forbidden planet and whatnot I mean, this should be something that they have, you know, displayed somewhere where people can, you know, see it and get it. And because not everybody, I I know we're going into a more digital world, but still there is some people who just want, especially science fiction nerds, physical media and to not have these available Mm. for foot traffic in, you know, these nerd stores and whatnot. I think that is kind of... I don't know, not cutting off their nose despite the, you know, not that thing, but just, I think it's short-sighted. It's like, you know, we know people are scaling back physical media, but there still is physical media, you know, people who want them. And I feel as Mm -hmm. though it's very short-sighted of them to be limiting it to only that. Now, maybe the Forbidden Planet has some orders done through big finish and maybe they have some that they they can be purchased but again i just think that it is kind of wrong for them to completely l- limit edition now granted the other the other side is that there is an unlimited edition t- to this but i feel as though foot traffic does deserve both options which i love the fact with the regular edition it's come from their normal supplier mm-hmm and there's been no issues. No issues whatsoever, yeah. <laughs> yeah, none at all. I just don't know why they just didn't use the same supply to do both. But Well, I mean, the yeah. only well, thing is, is you if know... If they were going to do a special release, mm-hmm. they should have gone to the one that did the the last Finals adventure for... and yeah. Light of the End. And all well, that. Yeah. I, I think the main reason why they didn't do that, though, is because... Those ones were done in like a clamshell, like, you know, the Disney clamshell mm. type of, a, you know, VHS covering, but more of a book format. Whereas this is mm. every single thing gets a special uh, sleeve, a special design. And in doing so, you're not able to give them that extra special thing. And that and that's the thing that actually 
I found the most curious about everything is I think I would have been more interested in picking it up because I do have the Six Doctors Last Adventure. I do have the light at the end like that. And I feel as though that would be like, you know, a perfect, you know, shelf space type of a, you know, nerd collection uh, situation. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is, you know, the single slot CD jewel case with the decorative design and whatnot. I feel as though that's just, just odd. Yes. I think it would have been better as a box set, you know, seven, eight, eight disc decorative box set that way rather than the rather than single releases yeah yeah, sure digitally release it over if you're going to do it for single releases sure do it do it that way but then just wait and then put out the physical box well and but that's been our complaint for a while though because again when we go back to when they stopped doing the you know the fourth doctor you know monthly release and what they did was they you know would release one you know it was the sutek storyline and then the one after that where they would have you know january the first one dropped the second one would drop in february third one drop in march the fourth one would drop in april and then they would send all four dvd or cds out in april and for some reason they don't want to do that and i don't get it because yeah granted some of these people are going to be irked because they're like i only listen to them on cd well guess what you also have access because you purchased it online to a digital version of it. You can listen to it both ways. It still is fine. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know what people are like, though. People are people, aren't they? They'll, oh yeah. They'll they're they're, they're about they can be the best and they can be the worst. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that's us slagging off the business model. Basically saying, if you're going to buy it, and you're going to buy it in physical form, buy the regular edition. Well, and the, yeah. that's the Don't shame. Buy the special Be- edition. Because I have enjoyed, and to me, the only difference, the only difference between the s- standard edition uh, release compared to the limited edition released is, at least digital-wise, it's just, you know, you get... 20 to 30 minutes more of the extended extras compared to what you would get if you just had the standard release. And yeah. Mm-hmm. And I I noticed at least digitally, you know, there was only they only upmarked it like 4 or 5 dollars in difference between the two, which made it just mm-hmm. that much easier to do the limited edition release. But again, <clears throat> ah, I don't know. It's I mean, you you can't even get the um the limited edition physical releases they've sold out completely. oh yeah well they sold out they a while they, ago they sold out within days and mm. now boy i bet the people who bought those are regretting that they didn't sell out in days it took them about a month to to sell out of the limited edition because liam kept on like you know you know being the you know devil on my shoulder being like brent there's still a couple left uh, did you see the news article <laughs> still a couple left you can still get it <laughs> can still get it you can still get it and i was like no nope <laughs> because I, and my reasoning is because of you know it cost about like 80 90 something dollars for the entirety of the set and then it cost another 75 dollars to ship it overseas i'm not paying Ooh. the same amount or nearly the same amount for the release as the shipping that wasn't gonna ever That's happen true. wow that's true, right? But the thing is, is if you had actually bought it, you would you would have been fine because you we would have been waiting for four, five, six, and seven, and they would mm-hmm. probably be able to ship it together anyway. So you probably would have saved on shipping. No, because it it, it wouldn't have shaved, saved on shipping because I had to pay for it all up front. The only thing that would be different is yeah, that they would have given me a front refund front. for you know ah. all of the oh sorry our bad type of a situation. Mm, I guess. Which that's what they sh- they should do. They totally some of these people deserve either some refund or they should deserve some money back on an up and coming adventure. I mean, not nearly the seven ninety nine that Liam is getting for his uh, not getting the ten dollar or the ten pound. Um, I have to say that I can't an, believe that. You know, give 
give them their due, that is an excellent bit of customer service. Mm-hmm. Sorry, we didn't reply to you. No, you didn't win. But here, have eight pound. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, but I love the fact that they got the email. Liam got the email literally twenty minutes after they announced a seven pound release, and Liam had already bought it. Messaged them back, going, "Can I have a refund? Can I have that?" And they went, "Yeah, all right then." Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was the, it was the broken the eleventh Doctor Broken Hearts. Um, oh, okay, release. All right. I, so, I, yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna say like, I, it's gonna be hard for you to get something for seven ninety nine because you already own all of that know, stuff right? and there's no everything exactly. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. oh, there's a new free buy up on the Big Finish website. Free buy? Hmm. Do you remember the old interviews they did in the very early noughties? Oh yes. Mm-hmm. The Eighth Doctor Writers interview is the new free buy. Oh, nice. I absolutely... I, I want them to do more. Yeah, it is a freebie, but it's a free buy. Cause oh, I guess. You're buying yeah. it, but it's costing you nothing. Hmm. I'll have to add that to the collection. I'll be happy once I put Sharda up digitally. Mm-hmm. Yes, that would be nice. Oh, which, by the way, we do have the complete... Uh, it is the complete animated Sharda up on the BBC iPlayer. Okay. Ah, cool. So... Lady. We've we've spoken about the dumpster fire that has been the actual release of Once and Future. Let's talk about the story now. Well, <laughs> how much of a celebration we'll, it is. We'll, we'll we'll get to that after you know a little bit. We still have some more things to get to. So, okay. um, good segue. Uh, but uh, let's go you. to the next Wrong bit segue. of new. <laughs> Big finish news. Yeah. You know, your segue is going the opposite direction. All right. And on to oncoming yeah, traffic, okay. too. Um, the <laughs> it's we have old friends join the seventh doctor for the last day. The final epic adventure of the seventh doctor can now be told as he's surrounded by many friends in a new 12 part full cast audio drama from Big Finish Productions. Now, here's the reason why I kind of wanted to first off segue this way instead of going down the Once and Future Avenue because as stated on the news, it says among the many guest stars featuring in this celebratory two box set series are television companion Sophie Aldred as Ace, Bonnie Langford as Mel, plus Lisa Bauman as Professor that yeah, Professor Bernie Summerfield Philip Olivier as Hector Hex Thomas, Schof- or Thomas Schofield, Amy Pemberton as Sally Morgan, Maggie O'Neill as Lysandra, whatever, Travis Aristides. Oliver as Chris Quidge, Yasmin Bannerman as Roz Forrester, and Chase Masterson as Vienna Salvatore. We also have Jeffrey Beavers returning as the master, Dan Starkey as Centaurans, and Edward <coughs> Peel as Kane. Uh, the last time he played that was in Dragonfire when we mel- watched him melt away into nothing. So, <laughs> why are you laughing at fact, me? I love the fact that they've gone, hey, let's get a really threatening villain. <laughs> Dragonfire. I know, we'll have, we'll have the master. He's great. Let's have the Sontarans. They're great. They're great. The seventh Doctor never came up against him in the TV. Who was a massive threat for Sylvester McCoy? I know, that guy who melted during Dragonfire. I mean, <laughs> it, it could it could be worse. I mean, they could have been Fenric. the it could have been the instead of the guy that they went up against in Dragonfire, it could have been, you know, the cliff that Sylvester the seventh doctor kind of, you know, <laughs> just un- dangled over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cliffhanger, I'm just going to climb over this fence and... (laughs) Right, now I'm in peril. What does this serve the story? Oh, nothing. (laughs) But here's the question, though. Does that cliffhanger actually serve a purpose? or is or is Or is the 13th Doctor's ending on a cliff actually more poignant? Oh, interesting. Uh, The 13th Doctor ending on a cliff is more poignant than a literal cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. I mean, she could have. I mean, she could have jumped off. 
I mean, everybody was rooting for why. it, actually, but... Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> do it! Do it! Do it! Uh, do, it do it now! But here, here's why I wanted to, again, be, I did want to kind of put all of the reviews kind of together for one thing. But the other reason why is we're, we're talking about the once in future, which is a celebratory thing. We constantly had this person, this person, this person shoved into everything. And so my, uh, my other, con- my concern for Doctor Who the Last Days for the Seventh Doctor is this sounds like just a, almost very similar thing that we've just experienced that was very, you know, spoilers for when we get there, underwhelming. And they also, are they going to do this? And then the other thing that I'm worried about is, are they going to do this similarly to the last days of the sixth doctor? Because again, we had three different stories during that point in time that kind of transitioned us to the eventual last story that occurred with Mel. Like, is this what, is this just going to be a complete celebration? Is this going to be a once in future thing? The only thing that I'm holding my hat on for it not being a complete once in future thing is we only have two writers. Uh We have Guy Adams, we have Matt Fitton and Matt Fitton is also the story editor for this entire box set. So at least it's not like a whole bunch of, you know, creator, 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 you know, part seven. So, I mean, I don't know. know What what I'm I'm, I'm actually looking forward to. I'm actually really looking forward to basically getting two six-parter stories for the seventh Doctor, which I don't think think we've ever had. No, it's it's not two six-parter stories. It's... um... Yeah, but it's a twelve parter. But what I mean is, it's is 12 the first parter, box set yeah. is going to be six. It's going to be six, six one hour episodes, stories, yeah. and then it's going to be six more so, one hour stories. Yeah, what? and and I think that's going to be interesting. Um, Hold up, because what? obviously, well, th- okay, yeah. that that's what I'm. That's what I'm. That's what I believe. I believe it is going to be. I think a, it's going to be. I, I think it's going to be six half an hour stories. You think? Yeah. I think it's hmm. going to be six half an hour stories each release, thus making it hmm. twelve parter. Okay. Yep. Oh, sorry. Any, You're, anywhere. You but, but, but I mean, yeah. even so, I think that's going to be interesting because I don't think we've ever had that for the for the seventh Doctor. Yeah. And but we no. have had it for well, other. Doctors, you know, if if so, you look again. at. Yeah, but I mean, if you look at like the the Vault on Infinity, for example, for the fifth Doctor, um, the. Okay, but here. Uh, let me interrupt um, and uh, go over that because, again, when we did the Fifth Doctor one, we first started off with the Tegan uh, Nissa Adric, and then we went to Tegan and Nissa, and then did was it Turlo? I can't remember. Anyway, we were working with. Oh, what was it? We were working yeah, it with... Wasn't it, it, wasn't it, it was Tegan no. Nissa Adric. Mm-hmm. Tegan Nissa. Tegan Turlo. Yeah. And so the, the problem with the, what you're saying is, yes, that would work if these were ever companions together at the same time. The only thing that you could say is, you know, Bernice Summerfield and Ace could be teamed up together. You can have so Chris Quidge and Roz Forrester mm-hmm. teamed up together. But then you're going to have a hodgepodge of Sally Morgan, maybe Sally Morgan and Hex together since they're kind of a couple sort of. And then, you know, it's I don't know. I think it's going to be a tad bit clunky. I I would rather them, you know, may, maybe it will make more sense when we listen to it. But I'm just speculating again, mm-hmm. just having listened to something kind of underwhelming. I kind of found personally for me. The Sixth Doctor at Last Adventure or whatever, kind of underwhelming. I was, I did not like that it was, you know, it dipped in and dipped out of this part, this part, this part, this part. I, that was kind of all over. And so I'm concerned that this is going to be all over, similarly to that, as well as, you know, what we just barely experienced. I don't know. That's just my concern. But I will be glad to be wrong. Yes. What are your thoughts, Lidge? Um, uh, 
I am very much on the same page as Brett. I hope it's not a repeat of Once and Future. You've got an awful lot of characters announced and they've all got to get some time and over 12 half an hour episodes. That's a lot of characters to get in, not including guest cast villains, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. I trust in Guy Adams because I like his writing, apart from the horror thing that he did. Um, but I trust in Guy Adams. Oh, what's that Guy Adams? What the what the Frost? Thing? Gods of Frost. The... What's that Guy Adams? Oh my god, that was true. Yeah, but I think. Narrowing it down to just two writers, which I hope is the same in the second box set. Mm -hmm. I think I mean, that it would make sense. That will streamline it. Yeah. I'm not going, hey guys, we've got eight releases. We need to tie it together, but we'll worry about that after you've written it. Hell, we'll even worry about that after we've released it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, according, I do. I do have to be honest. Mm -hmm. I know I'm slate in it. Mm -hmm. Before we get to it, but I have to go back to once and future and just say one bit of excellent canonicity. Mm -mm. Since the first part, people have been questioning: Do the costumes change? And we've had yes, they do. three releases that have clarified the fact that the costume changes. And we're still getting people going, well, I know they said that, but does the costume change? Well, I, I hope if that <laughs> is a question on the Big Finish listeners page, that you laughy face emoji on my behalf. That's There's that's... been like no discussion on that. Well, because of course there hasn't. XYZ is released. Th they're terrified. <laughs> they're absolutely terrified to have a conversation. I, I I I told you guys on the group, the the list, the audio group, like I have bookmarked a couple of things, and I don't know if it's for once in the future, and I need to pull it up because I completely forgot to. But it, you know, there's actual discussion because there is mm -hmm. no fear of you know angry admin removing people for disagreeing. Mm. Yeah. All right. So with that, that that that's my that's my concern. I'm glad Legion kind of has a similar concern. It sounds like Liam is the happy-go-lucky person of the podcast regarding the seventh day, uh, seventh Doctor, last day adventure. So you know what? Wonders will never see. I've got what I've got. One thing to say here, uh huh. Dear listeners, welcome to the multiverse. <laughs> Shut up, Legion. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> I like alternate version Liam. He's he's very agreeable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's a pretty swell chap. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> ah, all right. So with Tell an alternate universe, no uh -huh. comment. No comment. I know. Oh man, up is down, left is right. Liam is uh, less grumbly. All right, I like this place. Let's fuck off, here. Legion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, <sighs> latest Doctor Who news is we have Doctor Who and the Daleks, sixtieth uh, anniversary in color. I'm hmm. not sure I actually care that this exists, in all honesty. It's not just in colour, though, is it? No? No, they've taken seven 25-minute episodes, and they've edited... Ed, ed, edited... Did, did. Good job. <laughs> Fuck. The five Thanks. people you kill in Middlesbrough. The five people you kill in Middlesbrough. <laughs> 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 they've edited it there we go there we are. thanks down to a 75 minute movie which I think what? yeah no 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 I think this is really good for the Daleks because 
anybody who has sat through the full seven episodes of the Daleks, there is 25 minutes of them eating bacon sandwiches that we just don't need. I mean, look, <laughs> at, they look, had, look at episode wait a one. Mm-hmm. They had bacon sandwiches in the Scaro? No, oh, they had from, bacon sandwiches in the TARDIS. The, the, the food uh, machine. I was going to say. Oh, dear. Yeah. People worried about Scaro's um, pig. But look at episode one, for example. Episode one is 20 minutes of arguing, followed by four minutes of going through the deserted woods, followed by a minute of Barbara getting you know, assaulted by a plunger. Mm-hmm. Mm. You can cut so much from the Daleks, and I think it would benefit from it. It's also getting a brand new musical score, which I think huh. is good. Digital, the sound is being re-edited, which I think is really clever. Marquez is doing all that. But my favourite comment I've seen is somebody complaining about this and basically going, well, why don't they just use the Tristram Carey score? And the most amazing accurate reply is Tristram Carey's score was recorded directly onto the tape for when they're recording it. If you're editing it down to 75 minutes, you're just going to get random bits of music. Mm. And they were like, well, yeah, why, why, why can't we have that? Because it would sound dreadful. Yeah, it would. So, but no, from what I understand, Marquez has is worked. It, is it being, is it being aired on four. BBC? Okay. Do you think that... Uh, BBC so, Four I, and the iPlayer. I, and I guess it'll get uh, an audio description yep. option, I would imagine. Nice. What's yep. it being marketed as? Daleks the movie or what? Or like? Daleks in colour. The Daleks in colour. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. A battle. I love this tagline. Can I just say the tagline that they're using it is... Amazing. Hmm. Like, it's proper cheesy, but I love it because it's proper cheesy. And it's a battle. 60 years in the remaking. Hmm. And when's that airing? Do we know yet? The 23rd of November, 1963. So, so now... do. Are all three dates accountable for? So the November first was the all of the stuff on the iPlayer, and then this would be the twenty third that they were talking about. So what mm-hmm. was the sixteenth? Seventeenth is Children in Need. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, and that and that clip for David Tennant, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then we got episode showing from the twenty fifth. So uh, Brett, we also got that. How are you going to be watching it? So, um, mm. I'm whatever. I'm not. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It's on. It's on Disney Plus. Oh, okay. I will be using my sister's Disney Plus account. I mean, I will be using my personal Disney Plus account. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right answer. <laughs> well done, Brett. All right, you pirate. Arr. Uh, you know the funny thing about it is, is I, I've she's given me that account information forever, and I've not had the least bit of interest to check out anything on Disney Plus. So, like, yay me! Ahsoka's huh. really good. It is. Yeah, I think it'd be like homework for me. Like, I would have to watch an animated series that I hate the animation on. I would hate to. I would have to watch some more animated series that I hate the animation on. And you know what? It's just easier not to watch it. Huh. Yep. Fair. All right. So with that, we will go into the showrunner for the new series. RTD Russell T Davies reveals season fourteen actually is season one, and. I was fine with this. I actually was completely fine with this. And until, uh, um, I believe, Legion put this as part of the thing on the group. And I've looked into it. And that is why I uh, sent that. For some reason, my um, Google app 
will recommend articles and videos for me. And for some reason, while I was like kind of having a, um, I was building up to a rant, a who culture video popped up and I immediately shared it with the group. And before I could even finish typing, I have some disagreements with what's going on, but this isn't one of them. Uh, a kind English chap reached out and said, um, excuse me, um, ex- um, you don't like who culture. Um, why are you sharing it on the group? I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> An English porky pig. Who culture, folks? <laughs> <laughs> Do Mel Blanc uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who culture, Doc? Ah, <laughs> oh, dear God. Um, right, so between the two of us, uh-huh. I've got Disney covered with Mickey Mouse, and <laughs> you've got Warner Brothers. <laughs> well, I am ex- expecting the Flash movie to be drop- delivered at any time, right? Ooh, it actually just got delivered one minute ago. All right. Sweet. DVD? Blu-ray? Yeah, uh, Blu-ray. Blu-ray. Steelbook yeah. or standard? Uh, just standard. Standard because uh, I mean, I'll, uh, I love the Flashpoint movie because my favorite part is 40 minutes in when it turns into the Michael Keaton Batman movie. That is my absolute favorite <laughs> part. Of- <laughs> uh, can I, I love this flat. <laughs> Flash Batman movie. Exactly. I mean, can I tell you, I I have, like, Ezra Miller in real life is an odd dude. I feel as though he cast as the the Flash. That's one one way of putting it. I know. I'm trying to be nice. (laughs) Um, (laughs) It's one way you're doing it. Exactly. You know, I have this pencil. We mustn't lie. So I'm trying to say, be as nice as possible. He's just an odd dude, but he just, he's not the Flash. Like Grant Gustin from the CW series, that's the Flash. That is Mm -hmm. the type of person you should cast in a Flash movie. If not Grant Gustin, someone similar to it. But you have Ezra Miller who just doesn't scream Barry Allen or Hero at all. And so... I. And then, of course, you can say that the you know special effects are kind of wonky. But again, the movie is it's Flashpoint, but it is a Michael Keaton Batman movie, and that's the part of the movie that I absolutely love. So, um, yeah. All right, so th- that's the detour into my uh, thoughts on the Flash movie. Back to my thoughts on the season one. Series one, whatever it is. And again, I have no problem ab- actually with them doing this. This is a very comic booky type of a thing. When you have a creative that is in charge of, let's just say, you know, Captain America, after their run, sometimes what they will do, Marvel does it a lot more than DC, but what Marvel often does is they will be like, okay, well, we have a new creator, so now we're going to reset everything to issue number one. This is going to be volume whatever because we have a new creator. The series doesn't change at all. All they do is just slot it as a new volume. And I'm fine with this because, again, the classic series is, you know, considered seasons. The new series starting from 2005 and up to series flux is series now we're going back to seasons which is perfectly fine the part that i have the most problem with actually there's a couple things so here comes the rant stay tuned buckle up because here it goes so first off we have Wait the second, previous bro. is it don't interrupt is it, him. Is it... Oh. so we have our previous showrunner who was a madman who like went into the Doctor Who sandbox and didn't just play with the Doctor Who action figures. He broke them and then told you that you liked it. And we have this situation where things can get redone. 
can be fixed, can be mended. But for some reason, RTD is refusing to because he claims that Chris Chipnell is his friend. He also, in a quote, said, I'm also not going to be tackling the doctor's mom was human thing. And again, I'm fine with that. We can ignore that. But that is not the thing that has you know, broken fandom. What Chris Chibnall has done is broken fandom. And so here's my biggest concern and my biggest problem with what RTD is refusing to do. It is, again, I get it. I, I'm going to just repeat this one more time. I get it. When this is going on Disney Plus, you do not want to start off with series 14 or series 15 because it's going to be leaving people scratching their heads wondering what the heck is going on with this show. This is the first series, but for some reason it's starting here. I totally get the renumbering thing and that's what I kind of, you know, that's why I kind of shared that who culture video with the whole thing. But what one word really set me off. And that is something that the Who culture said, and that is something that Legion has said. And that word is reboot. I understand there are some fans out there who do not like the 2005 series because they feel as though it is a reboot. And I can kind of see where they're coming from to a point. I understand that, you know, the concern is they are going to change the lore, change the canon, and do that. However, From my experience, that is not what has happened. What we've done is we had a device, it was called the Time War, in which certain things were kind of set off to the side. The doctor was kind of doing similar doctory things, nothing new, nothing different, still the same doctor, just kind of a different set of rules because the Time Lords were no longer accessible because of the Time War. We were able to be reintroduced to the Daleks. We weren't, we were not beginning at square one. So I don't see the 2005 series as a reboot. I feel as though it is a continuation with a plot device to kind of shrink the series. Again, Chris Chibnall broke the series. He now has the Crimean War being fought by the English versus the Centaurans. That's never been fixed. We have the universe that is in shambles, broken, shrunken because of two bedazzled villains. That has not been fixed. RTD refuses to do that. We have the Timeless Child thing, which was too big of a problem for Chris Chibnall to figure out. So he decided to put all of this thing throw it into the center of the TARDIS, and maybe one day somebody competent or some creative geniuses in a Wilderness Years Part 2 might be able to actually come up with something definitively that actually works because Chris Jimnall broke the sandbox and then walked away with it or walked away from it because he didn't know what to do anymore. So we have a situation where things could be fixed, but again, the word reboot That is what sets me off because if we reboot things similarly to the comics, similarly to what Marvel did with the Ultimate Universe, similarly what Big er, DC did with the New 52, a reboot is telling every single story again and changing all of it. You know, we are going to, if this is a reboot, we are going to go to Scarrow for quote unquote for the first time. We are going to meet the Daleks quote unquote for the first time because it's a reboot. If this happens, I'm out on the show because I've already experienced those adventures and I like those more than any new series can give me. That's that that is my breaking point. If we start seeing the Ice Warriors quote unquote for the first time. I'm done. I will walk away from New Who because the the show from 1963 to, man, I'll kindly say Flux, to Flux was the show. We reboot the show. I've already seen those episodes. I've already been introduced to the Daleks. I know things. I'm smart. I'm a big boy. I've, I've watched them. Things can exist in black and white, and it is okay. But for some reason... New series fans who jump onto it are like, black and white is old and eh. It needs to be in color and good CGI. And that is my rant on why, what would happen if, or 
that would what would be if I decided to walk away is if it is a complete reboot and we start seeing things for the first quote unquote time. I'm not going to participate or give that show any ounce of my time, period. That was an excellent rant. Hmm. I don't I don't think that it's gonna be a complete reboot. But do you know what? Mm. If it is a complete reboot, I think I'd be on your side. Mm. If I, I don't think I would be, because you're absolutely right. We don't need the first this. We don't need the first that. Look at when they reintroduced the villains for now what is called, you know, what are we going to call it from now on? We can't call it New Who. <laughs> 2005. <laughs> <laughs> New who's go- sort of now who? Yeah, present who? Current present who. who? Yeah, yeah. But they didn't. They didn't treat us like idiots and introduce them. Or if they did introduce them for the first time, they were in a really interesting way, like the Cybermen. You know, Elseworld Cybermen. The Doctor went, "Oh yeah, we do have them in our universe." Yeah, they're just not around at the minute. Yeah, but. Uh, it, no, if it is the first story of everything all over again, nah. I would like to think that RTD wouldn't do that to us. Yeah, I don't I, think he will, you know. Well, no, I don't think he will. And it's all all the people that are going, oh, I'm not going to watch it because Disney are involved. And Disney are involved as a financing deal. They have no creative control. And then you come up with that argument and they go, oh, yeah, but they told RTD to change this scene. Yet yeah, they told him to change that scene because it was prohibitively expensive. Mm. I could say I, I don't but think I it will be a complete reboot, though. Um, no, I don't, I don't think. I no. think it'll be a soft reboot, if anything. Yeah. Like yeah. series, world wars. Because I mean, it wouldn't make sense. It it, it wouldn't. No. It wouldn't make any sense to do the specials of the Fourteenth Doctor. And then jump into shooty, and then go. Oh no! This is this is this is all rebooted. Like it, it just wouldn't narratively. No, it, it wouldn't. Wouldn't make sense. So I've been digging into conspiracy corner again recently. Oh dear! I know. Has anybody listened to the latest series of Redacted? No. No. I just barely found out that there was one. Series one of Redacted is really good. Series two I've not listened to. But there are parts through the series where they're trying to contact the Doctor. And the Doctor cannot be contacted because they are in a different universe. Hmm. And then it ends on the prelude to the opening Earth scene of the Star Beast. Uh, with a ship crashing into... Uh... Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what that scene is. Okay, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Hmm. But it's all part of RTD being RTD. And whether you love him or you hate him, the man has a flair for advertising. He also has a flair for pissing people off, <laughs> but also... Do you know what? He gives people what they need, not what they want. Mm. And what I need right now is a revitalization of my love for the show. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I think I think um, what RTD is good at, and I think we're going to see this obviously going forward, which is nice, is more cross-continuity, which I think it's needed for a while now. You know, and really make it like the MCU, like DC. Um, you know, make it all one universe. If well, yeah, if not completely cohesive, but you know, it takes part in the same, well, same universe and has references back to other references, and you know, so. Well, the interesting thing I've seen is people are basically saying, you know, the tales from the TARDIS aren't canon. Mm. They are and canon. And is like... They are canon. Oh, no, they yeah, are. Yeah, they're canon. Yeah. I've not watched them yet, but... Um... If you watch all six, 
the opening and closing scenes are very much of a muchness, but they are nice and they impart some excellent information. The, the memory TARDIS, which is what the stories are about, mm. is a really interesting concept. And I think there's going to be more Tales from the TARDIS done. Mm. But I just, it's nice to see the Fifth Doctor and Tegan. And it's nice to see Jamie and Zoe get their memories back. For a second time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But a, <laughs> an official. <laughs> Proper time. Because let's be honest, Zoe didn't get her full memories back in the Big Finish stories. It was alluded to that she was getting them back. But Uh it never actually said, oh yeah, she's fully got her memories back. And But it did with Jamie. With Jamie. um... Yeah, he got his memories back. He did. You're absolutely right. But what did Raven say at the end of the last box set? That she could take them away as and when. She could take them away, and if you get rid of me, somebody worse will turn up. Do you think um, RTD will uh, consider any of the Big Finish stuff going forward? I think they all do. I think him, and I think Stephen Moffat especially, do. Well, and do you know what? That's, Stephen Moffat That's said, news, too, because the second season of RTD, he's got Stephen Moffat on board. Yeah. Yeah. What 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 Steve, writing or, or, yeah, or just yeah. writing. Uh-huh. Wow. Stephen Moffat <laughs> has said, I will never write for Doctor Who again because he was treated so badly. And then RTD went, please. And he went, Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually he probably went, Come <laughs> on. Just, uh, and he's like, No. C- come on. No. Come, come on. on. All right. Come fine. on. You want to if I get you back, I don't have to ask Chris. Well, that will conclude episode 301 of the Dr. Lumber podcast. Thanks again for downloading and listening. We do appreciate it. I know at the very beginning of the podcast, it was discussed that we are going to do the reviews for the month of October 2023 from Big Finish. However, due to time constraints and the amount of editing that it took to get this far, uh, I will say that that has to be pushed to 302. So currently, Liam's uh, review of Passness Gang Volume 2 is uh, a Schrodinger's uh, review. He both loves and hates it. You will have to wait for 302 to find out definitively where he lies. Uh, Thanks again for downloading and listening. We do appreciate it. Please email the show, tweet the show. Uh, DMs are open. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for up and coming things as well as uh, celebratory stories from the Doctor Who's 60th anniversary as we review those two. Thanks again for downloading this. I already said that. Okay, let's just get to this. You have been listening to the Doctor Who Alhambra podcast. Doctor Who is owned and trademarked by the BBC. Doctor Who Alhambra is not affiliated with the BBC or Big Finish. No infringement is intended. Visit our website at alhambrapodcast.weebly.com or email the show at alhambraaudio at gmail.com. Tweet us at Alhambra Podcast. That is A-L-H-A-M-B-R-A Podcast. Thank you.